a break. Welcome back to the line. According to a recent article written by Bruce Krasnow in the Santa Fe New Mexican, no state has seen a greater increase in international trade than New Mexico. Since the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA, took effect in 1994. That's amazing when you think about it. But uncertainty over the future of the trade agreement is a source of fear for some New Mexico businesses as President-elect Trump prepares to take office. Donald Trump has called NAFTA, quote, maybe the worst deal, end quote, that the U.S. has ever signed. Daniel, what do you think would happen to places like Santa Teresa? Let's talk about that right where we are. And I encourage everyone to read that Bruce Krasnell piece. It's, it's actually quite amazing. Is it, are folks right to be fearful of this uh, I don't circumstance? Th I, don't, I don't think so. I, I mean, you know, when you, even when you read his piece, mm -hmm. you know, they're talking to people that moved down there last year, two years ago. NAFTA's been in place since 1994. Right. Um, you know, when I was in the legislature, we were at, at the, and I, it's not that long ago, even though it, every year it gets further, we were not the top trader with Mexico. We were way down the list in trading with, right. with Mexico. I mean, states like Connecticut had better trade Idaho than Mexico. Idaho had better trade right. than us. Right, and so, yes. so, I mean, this whole, the sky is falling over the NAFTA deal because, you know, we've grown so much on it. Clearly, Santa Teresa has grown, and down in southern New Mexico is benefiting from it. I think it's benefiting not so much, per se, Say just from NAFTA, it's benefiting from they built the largest port of entry to get in to the United States down there. They've got the rail yards down but there. But does his plan kind of derail all that? that I you don't think. So. I, I mean, I, I don't know how you can say okay. yes or no. Okay. And here's why I say that: Please. if this was passed in 1994 and it's taken till 2012 for New Mexico, giving giving folks the benefit of the doubt, 2012, 2013, to see see this thing finally come to fruition. I, I mean, it doesn't sound to me like this thing was the economic driver that they thought it was going to be. So right. I'm not sure that it, that, that it would turn mm -hmm. around and that all of this stuff would cease to operate the way it is. Again, he's been very specific that he feels like the NAFTA agreement has put us at a disadvantage. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it doesn't mean that there's not going to, who knows, he may come up with a deal that's better. You know, he's, he, he claims to be the art of the deal. He could come up with a deal that's just as good, if not better, and it could spur more growth for us. Think about it. If he, if he focuses more of that stuff, that more of that interchange of labor has to be done in the United States, mm -hmm. that's going to do more to grow uh, the United States. Right now, you've got, you got situations with cars where they're literally making cars in Mexico, driving them across the border, put the wheels on them, and then they can say that they're American-made. Right. So I think that's the kind of thing that he's talking about. Okay. Do, we, do we force more of that work? It'll be interesting to see. Tom, what, what's your sense of this? You're aware of Senator Teresa's importance, yeah. of course. One of the things about Bruce's piece that I liked a lot, it was it is now so impactful. They're talking about uh, changing a rail line to go around El Paso and to be able to get right to Santa Teresa and make the whole thing more efficient. That's a serious investment. And so I ask again, mm -hmm. is Mr. Trump, the president-elect, is his position going to really upset something that we've got some good momentum going for? Oh, I think there's always that potential. You know, okay. you have Union Pacific, uh, that, or yeah, Union Pacific Railroad that invested $400 million. Um, you know, really the, the brightest economic successes are down in Santa Teresa, right. you know, as far as when you look at uh, what's working for the state. So on the other side of the border, you have auto companies and, and companies that support uh, the auto industry. You also have Foxconn, uh, which is a major Chinese company. Right. And so, you know, how are are all these different things going to come into play? You know, nobody really knows, but there's enough, you know, churn at that national level where you go, you know, something could happen. Mm. And I think it's just another wake up call for New Mexico to diversify its economy. Momentum's tough for us, though. It's hard for us to get oh. that sense going. So any yeah. one small thing could potentially. Put it put it, it could, yeah. And Bruce, I, you know, I echo your thoughts. You know, Bruce did a really good job of saying, you know, saying how long it has taken Santa right. Teresa to get traction. Right. Uh, and so, you know, it, it took, to Dan's point, you know, it took a, for a while for, you know, Santa Teresa to really catch on. Mm -hmm. So, you know, hopefully that means they're in for the long haul as far as the companies down there. That's a good point. Andy, what do, you, what do you think of this? If this is something that businesses should be afraid of or perhaps it's an opportunity, as Dan's saying, that we're just not seeing it quite yet? Uh, well, what I thought was interesting in Bruce's story which again I'll say is was really well written mm -hmm. uh, was that he mentioned that people that the, somebody in his story said this may be affected even just the discussion of this maybe right. you, you know whether it's decided or not just the discussion of this may scare some people away right so I think uh, it's it's all hard to say right now and and I think we what we've seen is president-elect Trump has said a lot of stuff and kind of backed off on some things so mm -hmm. I think we really have to wait to see what he pushes through there's also a lot of people 
in Congress that maybe want globalization, more globalization, and, and even on the Republican side that say, look, we need to have open borders when it comes to trade mm -hmm. in order to, to keep mm -hmm. our economy afloat. Exactly right. You think about Dona Ana County, uh, Laura sanchez Reve, and the amount of jobs that could be at stake in this kind of a decision. Do you know what I mean? It's a very serious issue for those folks down there. We can muse about it up here in Albuquerque all we want, but it's very serious business. What's your thought? I mean, you're your fam's from down the southern part of the state, uh, not quite right there, but uh, mm -hmm. what's your Well, I, I do have family also in the El Paso and, and yeah. Anthony area, and so I, I'm familiar with that area. And, and mm -hmm. you know, I was, I was in high school when um, NAFTA was being talked about in the, um, under the Clinton administration. I remember Santa Teresa being, um, you know, I mean, it was a dusty little town. It wasn't mm -hmm. a border town at all. Um, Deming was more, and Columbus was more of a border town. Mm -hmm. um, and so there was really nothing there. You drive down there now, and there is, it, it is booming. Right. I mean, there, there's a lot more happening, and that means huge, um, that, you know, a lot of jobs for that area, for Dona Ana County, but also more economic development for the state overall mm -hmm. to be able to have that. So I think what's interesting is you see you know, the Rust Belt, these areas that are losing jobs. And I think that article that we read had an example of a Michigan company moving mm -hmm. down to, um, to Santa Teresa to take advantage of some of the opportunities down there. That's and right. so we see some of that movement where there's loss of jobs in Michigan, but that doesn't necessarily mean the jobs are going across the border. They're going to border states where mm -hmm. they see a different um, opportunity. Does this complicate the president-elect's uh, rhetoric about, you know, folks fleeing to go overseas. Is this complicated? Well, I think bit? in general, if yeah. you know, there's, there's a lot of fact checking that needs to happen there. Right. But um, you know, you mentioned earlier about Trump's plan. I don't know that there's an actual plan. I think the campaign the rhetoric was that he was going to do away with NAFTA. But there's been some articles, articles more recently in Forbes, for example, in, in early December that talked about how um, actually some of the advisors for Trump are now saying that you know, they're kind of soft pedaling a little bit on that issue about whether it's, it's realistic that they'll do away with it rather than tweak some of it. Mm. So I think you'll see some changes there. And frankly, it's very difficult, I think, from at least from where I sit, to see that there's any plan on any issue that he's moving forward. And obviously, you know, some of his, uh, you know, in terms of um, the press conference that he had, there were no details about anything. Mm -hmm. And we didn't see any detailed detailed plans about anything during the campaign. Mm -hmm. So what actually will happen compared to what was said during the campaign, I think are two very different things. It's going to be interesting yeah. to see how um, mm -hmm. this affects the relationship with Susana Martinez. Uh -huh. um, you know, there's been a desire to reach out to her. Um, he's shown a desire to bring people back, try to bring people back into the fold. Mm -hmm. uh, it's clear from the way Santa Teresa has grown in the last eight years that it's been a focus of hers. She's from down there. She understands right. the area. Right. We have seen, I mean, at a time when the rest of the state is just cratering, we've seen unprecedented growth down in Santa Teresa mm -hmm. uh, during her administration. So it's going to be interesting to see how much of an impact she's able to have in these conversations as a border governor, um, being chairwoman of the Republican Governors Association. Is this going to give her an opportunity to rally some more border state governors? Because, you know, we keep talking about how it affects Santa Teresa. Mm -hmm. There's got to be folks on the northern end of the United States that have had a, a much smoother, much longer trade opportunity with Canada right. that have got to be just as upset. And a lot of those are Republican governors as well. Right. So is Susanna Martinez in her position, not only with what she's done successfully to grow Santa Teresa, going to be able to build that coalition to go to the White House and say, you can't mess with us. That's a good point. That's a good point. Thomas, we, we come back around how you started us off here. I want to touch on what something Laura mentioned. There really isn't a plan from the Trump administration as it stands. It's not a solid plan. However, when you start using words like tariffs, it, it's like a nightmare scenario for lots of folks. It's that, like the last word they want to hear is about a tariff. Mm -hmm. can, you, can, can one really walk back from that kind of a thing? Do you know what I mean? That's a fairly serious thing to throw out there that you're going to throw is. a tax on somebody. Yeah, and, and I think what we're seeing here is is what the candidate says and then what the candidate does. Right. So you know, there's a, you know tariff in general. You know, will tend to you know get a lot of folks concerned, but mm -hmm. for the most part, I don't. I don't. You know, nobody knows a plan, and so I think you know. To I think it was Andy mm -hmm. Andy's point about the talk being really the real killer right now. Mm -hmm. You know, if everybody's all panicked, saying, "Oh my gosh, this is going to be horrible," you know, folks usually uh, say keep their business decisions far, far away from controversy. Mm -hmm. So, if there's controversy, not that we shouldn't talk about it because we should. It's a major issue. It's the one of the bright spots in New Mexico's economy. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, there's reason for concern. But I don't think the sky's falling. Mm, good point there. Now, when we come back to the line, we'll look at the PED's announcement that 95% of students who were not reading at a third grade level were promoted anyway.